Hello. Now we're in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 7. The wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous will stand. Um, God's saying, hey, at the end of time, the, the wicked, they're not going to be, the righteous are the only ones that are going to stand the test of time. It doesn't mean you have to be perfect. This means you have to believe in Jesus and follow him to the best of your ability and continue learning every single day. Saying, I'm going to get closer and better to my Jesus and you will stand forever. A man will be condemned, verse 8, according to his wisdom, but he is of a perverse heart will be despised. Uh, basically, just talking about free will, he, he, his wisdom, you can stand before God. What is wisdom? Taking knowledge and then applying it. Okay, so knowledge is there's a God. And one day he's the almighty God. He's going to judge us. So wisdom is, am I going to follow his rules or am I going to follow my rules? And God says, you get the choice. It's your choice. And you'll be judged according to what you thought was the best choice. Um, and, and God makes it clear. He, he says, I, I want to be your best friend. I want to be do. I want to be there for you. I love you. I died for you for everything. And, and if you don't reject me, that's fine. And you think you can find a better way to heaven. People say there's many different ways to get to heaven. No, there's only one. And so was, now here's the thing. There's many ways to tell people how to get to heaven, but there's still only one way because some people will listen differently. You know, there's a lot of different ways to get the message across. Some people think there's only one way to heaven is only one way to get the message across. There are many ways to get the message across because everybody thinks differently. Um, some some people are, are are more abstract. Some people are more concrete. Some some people respond to this better than that. You know, getting the, it's the same message, how to deliver it, that we need to find creative ways to do that. But the key is at the end, people, God judges based on the choice you make, based on the wisdom you've gathered through your life. Now, here's the thing. God says in Romans uh, that, that that his attributes are clearly seen. I mean, you really think about it. You, you think about going back to just where the first thing come from. There has to be something that made that first thing. And we didn't just magically poof out of nowhere. Um, and, and, and God says, use your mind. Use that logic mind you have. And God's going to say, I'm going I'm to judge you based on your thoughts. No, no one sends you to hell and no one sends you to heaven. You get to decide which place you want to live in. And God says, huh, here, here you go or here you go on that side. <clears throat> verse 9 better is the one who is slighted but has a servant than he who honors himself but lacks bread you know what what's this saying here you know sometimes people are going to do us wrong and, and here's the thing it's better to be <coughs> have someone do something wrong to you but still have people that serve you now what's it mean by a servant not a slave or something like that, but people who are with you, willing to do things for you uh, because they see you are. Because they'll see people slight you, but they go, you know what? They slighted that person. That was a righteous person. That they, they shouldn't have done that. And they come come to your aid. Then he who honors himself but lacks bread. Well, you know what? I'm just going to be prideful and arrogant. I don't care what anybody says. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to step on everybody I want. And then when you come to the point where you realize you can't do it, you can't do everything on your own. And then you're hungry because no one's there to give you anything. No one's there to help you. And sometimes it's okay to be slighted. It's okay to lie, you know, because remember, God sees everything. God judges everything. God's going to take care of everything. Sometimes it's okay to let someone slight you. And like, well, I can't believe this. But God's got your back, <clears throat> okay? And those who really know you are not going to be swayed by someone who says that about you. That's the key. People know you. Now, people don't know you. that They, they might have their opinion changed and all that. But anyway, that's God's issue. But the people that know you are still going to come. You know what? We're, 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 we're still behind you. We're still with you. Hey. You're going through a bad time. We're going to provide for your needs. That's what the bread represents here, your needs. And it's not always food-based. You know, it's a, sometimes just a shoulder to cry on someone to listen to. And, and people that know you uh, will be there. So better is one who has people that really know them, even when they're slighted. But they don't fight back. Let others fight for you. What, what, what a great testimony. Uh, yeah, uh, let me tell you about who I No, Let others carry the banner for you when they carry the banner for you that means a whole lot more to the adversary than, than, than you trying to righteously pump yourself up which is what the second the person who honors himself said hey, honor myself but i am great i have no i have no basis for my call myself great but i'm gonna call myself great anyways that's kind of what the world does today I, I i'm great in my no you can you only become great if someone else thinks you're great by the way jesus thinks you're great but you live your life in such a way other people say hey th this is a man worthy of honor a woman worthy of honor um, a righteous man, verse 10, regards the life of his animal, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Um, what's God saying is, as a righteous man, uh, the things that he has, he values it. The fact that he has them, he, he appreciates all that he has. Where, uh, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. They're, they're not. They're 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 they're, they're fraud. Um, they're they're like a wolf in sheep's clothing type of thing is what God's saying here. He's saying that they, they can be so cruel. They they they, they come to you and they, they're so nice, and then they're going to stab you in the back. Um, and uh, it, I lived in the South for many years, and there's a term called Southern hospitality. Southern hospitality has nothing to do with being nice to one another. 
I mean, <laughs> some hospitals that are really nice to your face, and then to put the knife in your back at the exact same time. Uh, that's what Southern hospitality is. I, I, I learned that the hard way because I moved from the north to the south. It took me a long time to figure that out. I ended up being there 15 years and learned the nuances of that. Uh, it's not a very good thing. But you know what? And it's cruel and it hurts people. And, and it, it ruins relationships. It ruins all kinds of great things that, that could be. But a righteous man regards what he has. You know what? He, he treats everything as precious, especially his relationships, um, the words that he says, how he treats other people, you know, and, and how he treats what the Lord has given him. Does he appreciate what the Lord has done? Remember, the Lord says, if you're faithful in little, you can be faithful in much. Well, have a great day. We'll be back tomorrow. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. And you're absolutely awesome.